What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Chig coming at you with another World of Warcraft Season of Discovery Gold Guide. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I go through Zulfarak Pickpocket for pretty decent money. I'm going to show you guys what the uh, loot tables are for the boxes. But before we get started, go ahead and hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you get notified every time I come out with a new video. So I am starting from scratch here to show you guys how I do the run. There are three things you need before you get started. One, as much bag space as you can possibly get. Two, a spec that is deep enough into subtlety to get camouflage and preparation. Doesn't matter where the rest of your points go because we're not actually fighting. So I'm doing this in my PvP spec. And three, a healthy amount of flash powder because we are not fighting if we get caught out of stealth we are vanishing and then we are going to wait until our vanish is back up if we need it again obviously you're not going to wait to keep going but ideally we do not have to use it more than once every three and a half minutes and it always be off cooldown however if you get in a situation where you do need to use it again you go ahead and you hit preparation also if you know the reset spots there is no reason not to bolt to a reset spot stand there and reset if you are close enough to it anyway let's hop right into it first thing if you have a pair of boots with minor run speed increase that is going to make this faster i have a pair of boots that has mithril spurs to get over here faster and then i have the minor run speed i also have a macro that i will pin in a comment what this macro does Clear target, targets enemy that is not in combat, and picks its pocket. So, what you can do is you can walk up, or you can do it this way. If you target it, just press pickpocket. If you don't want to target it, press the macro. It will target the closest mob to you, pick its pocket, keep going. So, one of the things I have noticed with people who are doing this farm is that they do not try to get the stuff from the zombies in the graveyard which is a problem in my opinion also use your distract if you need to or if you can because it will help you and the reason that's a problem in my opinion is because that's like 50 to 75 more pickpockets why would you not want to do that right so i'm going to show you how to pull the graveyard as a rogue i may even attempt to see if you can kill the zombies with shirk and toss in a reasonable amount of time and if so, I will make a guide about that. But for now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the path I take while pickpocketing, which is not slow. You can do this basically at infinitum. So I don't know if you guys know this, but pockets respawn after about 10 minutes. Okay, well, as you're walking around and you are picking pockets, if you do this the proper way and you get all the pockets and you're safe and you're you know, I won't, I don't want to have to say paying attention because you don't really have to pay attention for this farm. One of the best things about this is you can walk around and do it without really paying attention. And that is perfectly okay. Okay, look, I got pulled out of stealth. We vanish, pick the pockets again. We do not care, right? Like getting pulled out of stealth is a thing. We don't care. Um, so we're not worried about that. We are not worried about anything other than picking pockets and staying moving. Um, if you would feel safer, obviously you can wait on your cooldown, but you do not have to. So my two pennies right here. This is the first reset spot. Do not come up against this wall. Stand between these two boxes. If you're in combat, combat will drop. You'll be able to hop right back into pickpocketing as soon as you can go back into stealth. Just keep going. Don't really worry about it. So, if you are familiar with doing the farms over here in Zulfarak, you know that most of the time you come up here, you go to the right, you go straight to the graveyard. However, what we are going to do is the opposite. We are going to continue doing what we're doing here. We're going to pick all the pockets we can find. We are going to continue moving through. Um... Obviously, if you want, you can use your distract on cooldown. Um, when you have mobs that are kind of clumped up like that, um, there's no reason not to target them and then do your pickpocket. Obviously, you can use the macro, but when they're clumped up, it gets a little harder because you got to make sure you're facing the correct mob and all that. So 
You don't have to. Like these guys side by side, right? If you're not facing the mob you're trying to pickpocket, it's going to sometimes clear the target and get the same target. Sometimes it's just going to be a little bit of a pain. All right, so we're going to keep rolling. We're going to keep rolling. I might fast forward this part a little bit just to get you over to the other part. And then we will talk about all of the things that you're looking for, all of the things that um, are good from this. So pickpocketing lets you get greens. Uh, mostly you will be getting patterns. Sometimes you will get necklaces. You will get rings. You will get several, several, several items that are either able to be sold or disenchantable. You are also able to get the occasional purple, like the purple daggers drop off of these. Um, you can, from the heavy junk boxes, and I'll do a farm on that at some point, get Tibu's Blazing Longsword, which is incredible. So Wowhead shows the things that have been reported that have been pulled out that are recent enough, yada yada. So not always are you doing that, but sometimes you are. They are also not all the way up to date all the time. Not everything you see on Wowhead is everything you can get out of the boxes. So don't worry about that. What we are looking for are the grays, obviously, because grays sell for money. We like money. Um, they're free money. You will get ample amounts of food. So if you're out questing, you'll have food for days. You won't have to worry about anything. Um, the big ticket items. The first thing we are looking for are the... Sturdy junk boxes. How many you get is going to vary because it is a random drop, right? Um, you're also going to get a decent enough amount of raw silver from this. As you can see, I'm getting two silver. I'm getting one silver. I'm getting two silver. I'm getting two silver. You get a lot of silver, right? Um, these cookbooks sell for three silver each. They're already stacking up, doing pretty well. If you accidentally double pickpocket a mob it's fine do not spam your pickpocket button because every time you pickpocket you have a chance to be resisted if you pickpocket multiple times in a row and you get resisted one of those times you will get pulled out of stealth you want to only push the button one time per mob if you can help it if you're not close enough obviously that's a different story but it's fine all right so something else to consider the mana potions health potions the potions you're going to be getting they do not sell for a lot of money. Not these ones in particular anyway. The ones you get from heavy junk boxes do. But superior mana potions are cheap. They sell quickly and lots of people use them because they're good for farming. They're good for being out in the open world. They're good for questing. They're good for PvP. They're basically super cheap health potions that everybody is able to use from an early level because you only have to have level 35 to use them. We don't have big enough health pools for them not to be effective because they still heal for about 30% our HP. So they do sell. I sell a lot of them. I do not hold on to them. I keep five in my bag. Every one more than five that I get, I go ahead and sell in the auction house because it's free money. And I have noticed that I am still talking about things that I could have talked about earlier, but being able to keep talking about this and keep thinking of things that are not only useful, but things we're going to be getting is of a double-edged sword so it's cool um, as you can see here we're also getting the level 35 food you get multiple different types you can get soft banana bread you can get cured ham steak you can get uh, i think the other one like you can get all the level 35 foods um, you pickpocket them they will drop them so keep that in your bags that way you know if you're out classing or something and you don't need to use your level 45 food or whatever you're doing well so when we come around as you can see we are still moving we are still going we're still completely completely going still ham 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 right so so far we've gotten a little bit of gold we've gotten a little bit of grays and we've gotten five boxes right and that's what we're looking for the boxes are the most important things i will on this run in particular i will go ahead and open the boxes but i will do a box opening video soon to show you guys like a bigger sample size or whatever that way you guys get a better idea of what kinds of things you can get um being able to get these items and being able to get these junk boxes has always been something that i've been a big fan of because it's something that's unique to the class and having poisons is unique to the class and having you know our individual things that we have to do that we have to level up that we have to work on right like a lot of rogues will not get their 
um, lock picking up as far as they should. A lot of rogues won't work on their poisons as fast as they should. A lot of rogues won't do everything they need to do to make their class the most effective as possible. So, you have that. Alright. We are over here. We are now at the graveyard. And I'm going to show you how to get an extra big old bunch of mobs for your pickpocket spree here. So, first things first. There are a couple reset spots. One of the reset spots, you're going to come over here. You're going to run. You're going to jump up here. This is going to reset them. This is where we're going to reset before we open these. We're going to run over here. This is the last reset spot. You're just going to run towards this corner. You're going to jump up in the corner. If you miss, just back up and jump again. Back up. Double jump, double jump, double jump. All right. If you're a rogue, you have vanish if you need it. You can run through here as a rogue um, if you need to, but that one doesn't happen a lot. So what we're going to do, we're going to aggro the boss. That way every mob that we get when we first click these will run to the boss first. Then we are going to run over to these pots. This is our first reset spot. This is the first place we need to be. So we're going to run here and then we're going to wait for them to reset. They're not going to take super long and then we're going to open all these and we're going to go over there and we're going to jump up and we're going to reset and we're going to open all those and then we're just going to pick the pockets because we don't have to worry about it right so you run up the stairs until he yells once he yells you turn around and you bolt all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to go at an angle so we can just hop around all right bang all right he did his thing now we are going to open all of these you can put your interact on mouse scroll if you want. We're not in any kind of danger. We only have one mob on us that's hitting us. All right, we made it over here. We're resetting. We're gonna stand here until they reset. I may or may not have gotten all of these because I was trying to talk while I was doing it, but this is what we're doing. All right, we're gonna reset these guys. And you only have to do this the first time because they're gonna stay up indefinitely, right? So now they've all reset. Okay, so we got a group of mobs there. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to open these up. When they say I can't loot that right now, that normally means that there was an item in that one instead of a zombie. All right, so now we can sprint. Got all those ones open. Jump up on this. Jump here. And those guys are going to reset. So now we have more things to pickpocket, right? Now... Since there are so many mobs that are really close together in this room, once you are in here, as soon as you get resisted, if you get resisted when you're pickpocketing, your immediate reaction should be to vanish every time. Because there are so many mobs, if you don't, you're going to get bonked. If you get bonked, sorry about it, run back, reset, you're good. You do not have to reset. You can come back in this room, you can pick these pockets, and then you can walk back to the front. Once you get back to the front, since you've already been pickpocketing, those mobs should have their pockets reset. If you die and you come back in, pick the first mob's pocket. If it is reset, do the loop again. Do this at infinitum until your bags are completely full. And then go to gadget, empty your bags, do it again. So, you do not have to reset it ever. You can keep the same lockout as long as you want. You only have to do this part one time, which is amazing. Alright, so... Now that we have those, we're going to jump down. We're going to click, 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 click. All right, so we're just opening more graves. We're going to run over here. We're going to make the jump. We're going to try to make the jump. Whoop, whoop. All right, make the jump. We're up here. Now, I'm going to let them reset. Awesome. You make a little loop after they reset, after you can go back into stealth. As soon as you can stealth, you can just stealth and start pickpocketing. And this is going to be... Amazing, right? All right, so we can stealth now. So we're going to go. We'll save those guys for last because we're going to walk over here anyway. So we can. Now here, I would recommend pressing tab, getting each different target because they are stacked up pretty tight, right? Make sure you get a different target, different target, different target, different target, different target, different target. All right. Now, since all these guys... All right, so now it's targeting the boss. Now we can target that guy, pick his pocket, pick that pocket, pick that pocket. Now look at all the raw silver we're getting just from these guys. All right, now we're getting red roses. Okay, got some red roses. Now give those to your friends or sell them to the vendors. They're one silver and change. All right. 
So we got those guys. Now, there's a superior healing potion and a raw black truffle. See, we're getting more food. There's another superior healing potion. Raw black truffle. All right, now you see how close all these mobs were together. You see how much, like that was just a ton of raw silver, a handful of potions, some red roses we can sell. Now you don't have to sell the red roses if you don't want to. Obviously you can delete them because they are, you know, one takes up a bag slot, right? Um, it says you can sell them in the auction house. Can you sell them in the auction house? Yes. Are they going to sell quickly? Probably not because they're an RP item unless you're on one of the RP servers, which is fine. You can do that. All right. So as you can see, we're still getting all these items. You can, I do not go over here. There's really no reason to go over there. Um, you can just run right past here. Now, if you want, you can mount up and go through here. It doesn't really matter. I like to just stay stealth because if there's a pat somewhere, I don't have to worry about it. Um, as you can see, I did not have to use preparation this run, which just makes it a little bit better. You don't have to worry about it. You can use your sprint on cooldown to make it a little faster if you like. So we got five potions. We got five junk boxes. We got a bunch of the exotic cookbooks. We got a bunch of grays. We got um, some bread, some meat, some, you know, just tons of different items that some of them are going to be useful. Some of them are going to be useless. Some of them are going to be vendored, but they are all progressing our goal. So we are going to be getting a decent amount of money from just pickpocketing mobs, right? So last time I opened this, it said I had earned just over 11 gold this session. And now it says I've earned just over 12 gold, which was just like a minute ago, maybe two minutes ago. So just pickpocketing, we were able to get one raw gold already, which is, you know, it's not the most, but what did we do to get it? Right. What did we do to get it? We did absolutely nothing. Okay. So this is where we were, right? So let's see, are these mobs done? So we can walk that way and we can repick all those pockets. But if these mobs pockets are reset, oh, Hey, they are. Now we can just do this loop at infinitum. We can walk around in circles. We can get all of the resets. We can get everything we need forever, right? You never have to leave until your bags are completely full. Okay. This is amazing. You do not have to leave. You can keep walking in circles. You can keep picking the same pockets over and over and over because they reset. And as you can see, we just keep getting one silver and change, two silver and change, three silver and change. We are getting the items that sell. We are getting the grades that sell. We are getting everything we could possibly need to make sure that this is a steady gold farm at all times, period. Right. All right. So I got... I didn't get a ton of junk boxes, but I'll pick pockets on the way out of here to see if um, I might be able to get another one or two junk boxes. But that's the thing, right? We will open these last junk boxes up to see if we get anything. We may not, you know, like that part's RNG 100%. So we're not too worried about that. What we are worried about, though, is, you know, the potions, the grays, the raw silver, the raw gold. Like, it's all adding up right like it doesn't feel like it because like okay it's like that mob just gave me four silver because she gave me an item that's worth three silver and change and she gave me almost a copper or almost a silver so that mob gave me four silver that mob gave me two silver that mob gave me 73 copper that mob gave me soft banana bread which i can vendor for one silver and two silver so three silver that mob three silver that mob three silver that mob 80 copper like you know it doesn't feel like a lot because it's not a lot at a time but what it is is guaranteed to be profitable there is nothing about this that is difficult there is nothing about this that is a barrier to entry there's nothing about this that is ever going to put you in a situation where you're like oh man i can't do this farm if you're hanging out at home and you play a rogue and you don't want to mindlessly grind mobs, you want to put a show on and you want to just turn your brain off and you want to make some gold while you're at it, do this because 
you do not have to do anything other than walk around and you don't even have to press tab you can press one button i'm just pressing tab because it makes it more engaging right being a little bit more engaging makes it a little bit more fun but all right cool so as you can see these are all the mobs that we pickpocketed when we walk in all of their loot tables reset right so you don't have to worry about that and once you get better at this obviously you're going to go through a little faster you're going to get better and better and better so you know just these things so one stack of those is 16 silver right so got like a gold worth so 16 32 48 64 and then six more so we got 80 silver just in exotic cookbooks all right Let's open these lockboxes. See what we get. All right. That one had superior healing potion and dust of decay and some. So those are sixteen. Yeah. So the healing potion, bang. All right. So there you go you can sell essence of agony now people don't typically buy these in the auction house because rogues know they can get those from a vendor but like carved ivory bone there you go you were able to get that from this this was three silver death weed you can vendor for 25 copper like you're just gonna vendor all of these things the only things i wouldn't vendor as far as like rogue specific things is the um blinding powder uh so of course snuff that's silver 50 that we just got for no reason all right like all of these things are just free money right and then these drop potions they drop raw money so blinding powder times five so if you vendor that that's seven silver and something if you sell it in the auction house it's 40 silver right like this is just really good really steady gold um if you guys want the pickpocket macro i'll have that in a pinned comment i'll also put my macro that is for lock picking um, you just adjust this accordingly. It will use the unlocked box. And then if the box is locked, it will pick it. And it just lets you pick pockets without really having to do anything. As you can see here, our raw gold just from the last couple minutes has been over two. We have a bunch of things we can vendor. We have some things we can put in the auction house. We have some potions. So that's over a gold worth of potions. We've got over well over a gold worth of grays. We got tons of things we're going to be able to sell to the vendors like this is just a steady gold farm guys like this is a good thing to be doing this is a good spot to be in and this is a good way to get all of your gold needs met while you're doing basically whatever you want to do like i said only three requirements speed while stealth preparation vanishing powder so that's it like proper spec vanishing powder bag space everything else you can do um i have a pair of boots that have mithril spurs so i can run back and forth faster and i have a pair of boots that have move speed on them that's all i have everything else you don't need anyway hope you guys like this if you stuck around to the end go ahead and hit that like button hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so you get notified every time i make a new video and um catch you guys in the next one see ya